Last November, the International Space Station, with its 14 modules, its maze of corridors, living quarters and laboratories, celebrated its 10th anniversary. Its assembly practically finished, 2001 marks a turning point for the orbital complex and its international partners. To maximize its use, there's now a consensus to keep it flying for at least another decade. Europe, for its part, with its Columbus Laboratory, the Multipurpose Logistics Module, the Node 3 Connecting Module, and its Cupola Observation and Control Tower, is eager to fully exploit with its astronauts all the benefits of this facility in orbit. And the ATV is a key element in this strategy. We are talking here about the biggest international space program which has ever been uh, designed and ATV is the mean in order to pay our debts for the fact that uh, our US partners are operating Columbus for us. So it's an obligation and it's a responsibility uh, and we need in total at least uh, five ATVs in order to pay this debt. Uh, that includes Jules Verne and we are under discussion whether we need another one uh, for the ISS extension. With the Space Shuttle retiring soon, Europe's automated transfer vehicle will be the largest logistics vehicle for the ISS. Until alternative craft become available, there will also be the Russian Soyuz to ferry astronauts to and from the station, and two space freighters, the Russian Progress and the Japanese HTV. But with its six to seven ton capacity, the ATV can load three times more cargo than the Progress, and the HTV has to be grappled and manually docked to the ISS. So the automated ATV is the most valuable asset for the continued operation of the space station, particularly when it is permanently occupied by six astronauts. The arrival at this time of the Johannes Kepler mission is of paramount importance for the ISS. Since the shuttle has an interest to provide high upload, the ISS is flying a bit lower in order to allow sh shuttle to bring as much as payload to the ISS. So now with the shuttle retiring, ISS will be lifted and this will be done by ATV and it's in a significant lift of about 30 km which ATV2 has to provide. ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli will be fully involved in these operations and particularly in monitoring the docking. The ATV-2 is the first of a series of closely spaced recurrent missions. Indeed, flight directors at the French Space Agency in Toulouse are already preparing for the third ATV, christened Eduardo Amaldi, which is programmed for the spring of next year. Production-wise, the prime contractor, EADS Astrium, currently has two other vehicles on order after ATV-3. ESA, with its member states, has started examining a proposal to budget for an additional vehicle. If Europe and its partners are to pursue medical, scientific and technology research in this orbital facility, and in future years use it as a staging post to send manned missions to the moon and further into space, then there are few real alternatives to adequately service the International Space Station during the next few years.